everybody would probably know boil them cabbage down and and uh, how many people read i know doug reads music does anybody else read music yeah. okay good. a few people yeah okay good not very well okay well that's yeah. okay um this boil them cabbage down of course uh but you'll know, demonstrate the four notes if you if you're looking at your sheet you'll see the first measure is c sharp and you're just going to do c sharp um mm -hmm. yep. And then sort of second fingers on the second string, then the D note, third finger, back to C sharp, then the B. And the only other note is open A in the whole song. That's it. So, um, so we're basically thought we'd take those four notes and, and you can play a song, get a kind of cool song just with four notes, but you can also elaborate on it. So that's why we put this together. And um, I'm going to just go through and play the whole thing for him so they can hear what it sounds like. Okay. And then we'll tear it apart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just assume we're still in tune for you here. So we're going to set up really basic, and we're just going to play what's on the sheet here just so you can hear that. Okay. There's actually eight versions of the song on these two sheets. Uh, same song, same key, same chords. One, two, three, four. just how you can take a really simple song and anybody could play any of the versions as the other person like we could get eight people and each just take a part and it would all just work so um, so we might just want to do that you want to just maybe go through um, how many did everybody know this song uh, I can't play it like you can <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about that <laughs> um, well why don't we, um, we're, we're going to play the first two lines, and I put the words here just because um, that sometimes will help when you're learning a song. If you know basic words, you can get, get it kind of stuck in your head a little bit, and that's how the old fiddlers used to learn, is they would learn to whistle the tune, and they didn't read music, and so once they could whistle it, they could play it. They knew where their, their fingers would go. So... Um, Whoever has the violin and has the inclination, we'll, we'll just play the first two lines all together, and, and um, I'll do a four count, and then we'll just we'll just play that. So we've got four quarter notes, couple half notes, and so on. Okay, one, two, three, four. just to get the feel. And, and that's the other thing that, you know, you, you always want to work on is, um, is, is counting. Um, and counting to four, as you find out once it's all done, learning to count to four is one of the toughest things that there is, <laughs> only because you have to subdivide it and keep track of everything. And, but, um, 
but it's very important. So that's that's um, that's what does hold the band together. So maybe we'll count to four and we'll play it one more time okay. just for fun. Yeah. Okay. So really focus on the one, two, three, four beat this time. Okay. One, two, three, four. Sometimes if you go through the words, like I'm not a singer, Bethany's a singer, but she has a cold, so she, we probably won't get her to sing. But, um, but the violin cabbage down, boys, bake them little cakes brown. The, the only tone that I can sing is violin cabbage down, down. Okay. And I'm so an that's the idea I of forget the ball. Ball. just playing. And, um, here. So the next, like measure nine, you'll see where another good reason for music. There's lots of good reasons for music. But when we go to the next part, if we just say measure nine, everybody can see that that's just the third line. You see a little number nine here. And, um, so if we were like on measure four need or five to or something, we'd be able to find it real easy. If you need so if we start on measure nine, um, then we're going to do the boom chicka uh, version. Then. Yeah. Um, maybe Bethany and I will just play that one through once just to show. I'll give us a four count. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to do one more thing before we play it all together. I'm going to play the basic version that we played in. You can do the boom chicken. Just to see it, show you that you can do two different things at the same time. One, two, ready, go. be like if you had a singer singing along, the, they could sing right along with that, even though someone else is maybe playing um, the boom checker or whichever other version you might um, choose to play. So the boom checker is actually counted one, two, and three, four, and it's all down now. And it's probably the, the uh, strong link in a fiddle player's repertoire, but uh, every fiddle player needs to know the boom checker. So, well, let's just take a stab at boom check out together. And so we'll start at measure nine and we'll play those next two lines. And I'll give us a four count. Uh, we've got some Hang on. handouts here. Did you get one of those, John? I want a handout. <laughs> <laughs> start and play from measure one, it's not going to make any difference. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we're pretty close that time. <laughs> <laughs> we just, need, we just quit, need to play harder I stuff. everybody else that time. <laughs> uh, I think we're ready for the shuffle thing right now. <laughs> Well, that pretty much is, is the shuffle, and sometimes they do call it the shuffle. So, um, so that that is the the anchor though of uh, fiddle playing. So the next uh, version starts on measure seventeen, and basically what we're doing now is putting in. You can see two notes. They call those double stops, and maybe we'll take a second and talk about chords. Yeah, and so. Um, you can see the chords written above, on, and there's three chords in this song, the A chord, the D chord, and the E chord. And so, um, why don't you write um, the A scale first? So Bethany's going to write the notes that could be possibly in this song. Um, in a scale, when you go do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, there's eight notes. The first and the last ones are both the same name, but they're just higher and lower. So in this A scale, you'll see three what they call sharks. They look like little tic-tac-toes right here. And 
they're always going in a certain order. If you only see one that it's F, you see two is F and C, you see three is F, C, G. So you'll see all three of those sharps are in that scale. The A, B, C sharp, do an E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. You might want to just focus in on the board for a minute, John, because that's where we're going to be. Or Bethany, either one. I'm not. If I get so. bored, I'll shoot the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next thing is um, when you see these chords, um, you can get your your notes from knowing which uh, you get your chords from knowing which notes make up each chord. Go ahead and do the circle. Um, you people that have played music have probably learned the every good boy does fine um, saying, and we add two notes to the A and C. So we're gonna our little saying is at college every good boy does fine. And we do it in a circle, and you'll see why in a minute. And this circle will do a lot of things for us. Um, one of the main things it will do is it'll help us to figure out which notes will sound good together. And <laughs> I'm just going to fix like my the penmanship. <laughs> there you go. It's not much of a circle either. <laughs> and it's, a, it's an egg shaped circle. That's good. Okay. Oval of fifths. So that, and you might want to, once you put a little, little arrow going on clockwise. So we know which way the circle goes. Okay, good. And then the this song has three chords, A, B, and E. So if you start with A and you go around clockwise, every chord is made up of three notes. And there's three consecutive notes. So the A, the C sharp, and the E will be in the A chord. So when we're doing bottom cabbage, when we're looking at measure 17, we're gonna see a we don't even see the A note in that first measure, but we do see the C sharp and the E. That's why it sounds good with the A chord. And the next chord that's in there is the D. So the D chord will have the D, the F sharp, and the A. So on that second measure, we have a D and an F sharp. That's why that harmonizes and sounds good. And then finally, when we get to E in the 20th measure, we have, well, first of all, in the E chord, we have E, G sharp, and B. So you can see we're actually using all those notes, just with those three chords. So in that 20th measure, we have an E and a B, those two notes harmonized together. Um, but with the E chord, you could have had a G sharp or you, you, in the E or a G sharp and a B, any combination. So why don't you write right underneath the note A equals A C sharp B and B yeah. equals D F sharp A and so on. So that little circle is kind of nice because it works for any key, and if you know your sharps or your flats that are in the key, you plug them in and you've got your chords, you've got your harmony notes. Um, so when you go to you do double stops or just even chording along, that's how you figure that out.